في أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد ما دي brothers and sisters in Islam you can feel the vibe the anticipation the eagerness every one of us is waiting for the news Ramadan has begun there's no bigger and better news for us at this moment then that statement, that message that you receive, Ramadan has begun. And this is a great sign for the Muslim Ummah. As long as we have this eagerness, we are still firmly rooted in our faith, in Islam. Now, many people start talking about the actions that a person has to do in Ramadan. And you know, they start thinking about how am I going to cope with the long fasting? Alhamdulillah, this year is shorter than previous years, but still, the days will get long. And they also start thinking about how am I going to manage work and sleep, the fasting, the uh, taraweeh, the qiyamul layl, how am I going to manage this, that, and the other? This, my brothers and sisters, is not the way we should look at Ramadan at all. Because when you start looking at the different chores and the different tasks and your list of tasks that you have to do, it can overwhelm a person. This is not how the Prophet ﷺ introduced to us the coming of Ramadan. When you look at how Allah introduces it, and how the Prophet ﷺ introduced it, it creates an excitement, a buzz, an eagerness. You know when you're excited about something, you really look forward to it. It never feels like a burden, it never feels like a chore, it never feels difficult at all. So the first thing, and we have to start with what Allah said. When Allah said, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ When you hear that fasting has been prescribed on us just as it was prescribed on others, the load of the deed becomes lightened. But then you turn to the Prophet ﷺ, and he builds even greater excitement about the coming of Ramadan. In the hadith of At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ says, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ The first night at the beginning of Ramadan. So you imagine, if it's announced that Maghrib tonight, that's when Ramadan starts. That's what the Prophet ﷺ is talking about. So the Prophet ﷺ says, the first night of Ramadan, this is what happens. First thing he says, Sufidat al-shayateen wa maradat al-jinn. He says, the devils and the big troublemaking devils, the really evil ones, they're all locked up. Then he goes on and emphasizes, وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابِ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْ هَبَابِ then the Prophet ﷺ says, the doors of the hellfire are shackled and locked shut. And not a single door of the hellfire of its seven doors is left open. Then he goes on and says, وَفُتِّحَتِ الْأَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا بَاب And he says, all of the doors of Jannah are opened, flung open, فُتِّحَت Flung open. And not a single one of the eight doors of Jannah are left closed. And then it doesn't stop there. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَيُنَادِ مُنَادٍ A caller calls out. Now this caller 
this caller, after all of the changes in the heaven that you just heard about, yes, the heavens change. At the first moment of Ramadan, the heavens change. The whole universe changes. The generosity of Allah is unmatched in any other time. And the Prophet ﷺ singled out the night. This happens at the first moment of Ramadan and that's the night. Because the night precedes the day. He's telling us the whole universe changes. Can you imagine a better time when everything is now changing for the better? Hellfire is locked up. The evil jinn are locked up. The situation is created in the heavens before the earth, ready for us to actually live the lives that Allah created us to live. Tahqiq ibadatillah. To actualize the worship and servitude of Allah. The whole of the universe does it, except for man and jinn. <coughs> we are the ones who struggle with it. And at that moment, Allah creates the perfect environment. The perfect environment. Then, on top of all of that, وَيُنَادِ munadin, A caller calls out. What does he say? He says, يَا بَغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ He says, Oh you who want good, this is your moment, this is your opportunity, come forth. Isn't this what we feel at that first moment of Ramadan? Now just think about the people that you know, your friends, your family, everyone in this masjid. As soon as you know it's Ramadan, you watch how we run out of our houses. We're there before Maghrib waiting for that moment when Ramadan starts. Not waiting till you know, the last moment of the rakah that we catch it, no. We're out there early. When it comes to Isha, the masjid is full. Everyone has now immediately changed their lives at that one moment when Ramadan entered. Their whole lives now change. It's all about waking up for suhoor. And that is barakah. That is a worship in itself. Getting ready for the fast of that day. And they're making their way to the masjid. In one moment, Allah changed the universe and He changed our hearts. Just with the coming of Ramadan, the caller calls out. We don't hear him with our ears, but we definitely hear him with our hearts such that we submit to what Allah wants from us. Then on top of that, the caller says the second statement. Ya baghiya shar, aqsir. He says, oh, you who want evil, then desist. Do less. Don't do it. And then, the majesty of Allah, the generosity of Allah. For the Prophet Sallallahu he says, وَلِلَّهِ أُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ And Allah has people He ransoms and frees from the hellfire. And you're thinking, when? When does that happen? I want to be part of that. Because there's no gift for the slave greater than being freed from the hellfire. That's the greatest gift that Allah can give us. Because if you're not going to the hellfire, you're going to Jannah. You will be covered in Allah's mercy and forgiveness. There is no greater thing in our lives than that. So your heart is asking, when is that my Lord? And the Prophet ﷺ responds, وَذَٰلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَ And that is every single night of Ramadan. Every night of Ramadan, people who deserve the hellfire, Allah frees them and forgives them and they are destined for paradise. This is Ramadan. This is what we are about to enter upon. Now, the Prophet وسلم, when you look at everything he said about Ramadan, 
you come across three golden opportunities which summarize for us the main objective of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ said, من قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه Whoever stands even that one night ليلة القدر out of his faith in Allah and only hoping for the reward from Allah even if it was one night ليلة القدر he got it all of his past sins are forgiven wiped out clean slate in one go. Then the hadith continues. When man saama Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisab and Rufira Lahumat Kadaman Dambi. And whoever fast continuously all of the days of Ramadan, he has all of his sins forgiven. That's opportunity number two. And the Prophet said, When man kama Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisab and Rufira Lahumat Kadaman Dambi. And whoever prays consistently every night of Ramadan. Every night of Ramadan, he has all of his sins forgiven. As long as he did that out of faith and hoping for the reward from Allah. Three golden opportunities to have your sins forgiven. Wiped out. Free from blemish. What does it tell us? You imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam seeing this change in the universe. We can't see it. We can't see it. The Prophet ﷺ specifically said about himself, Indeed I, ara ma la tarun. I see what you people don't see. Wa asma'u ma la tasma'un. And I hear that which you do not hear. We don't hear that caller. We don't see that change in the heavens. The Prophet ﷺ was shown. It was clear as day to him. The Prophet ﷺ seeing this generosity from Allah, overwhelming generosity as if Jannah is flying out. Everyone is going to be forgiven. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. The Prophet ﷺ is seeing that reality. And then it makes sense what he said. You know, he stood up on the mimbar and he got to the first step. And he said, Ameen. Then he got up onto the second step and he said, Ameen. Then he got on the third step and he said, Ameen. So the companions asked, why did you do this, Ya Rasulullah? Because you don't normally do this. He said, just now, Jibreel alayhi salam, he came to me and he said, Allahu anfa abdin aw ba'ud. He said, may Allah disgrace, humiliate, destroy that slave. Who? دَخَلَ رَمَضَانَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ له. He entered, he attained Ramadan, he lived it, and he didn't attain Allah's forgiveness. And you think who the Prophet ﷺ was. He was رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The mercy to mankind, the whole of creation, the universe. And he says, a person who enters Ramadan, lives it, and still doesn't get the mercy of Allah, that person deserves no mercy. Why? Because on a plate, it's there for the taking. You don't have to do much at all. That's Ramadan. That is Ramadan. It adds not a lifetime to your life, but far more than that. You know, you have scholars talking about from different ahadith, although they have weakness, the different levels of deeds and rewards for those deeds in Ramadan. You know, some say, according to those narrations which have some weakness in it, that if you do a voluntary deed in Ramadan, it's like an obligatory deed. If you do a deed, it has thousands of rewards for you. And it didn't have that in Ramadan. The basis of that is, does Allah's generosity have any limits, any bounds? Of course not. And Allah is most generous in Ramadan. How do we know that? 
When was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam most generous? And he was the most generous of people at all times. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas and others says that they found him to be at the pinnacle of his generosity in no other time than in Ramadan. Why? He saw Allah's generosity. He saw it descending upon the creation. How could he not? become even more generous than he normally was. So what does that tell us? You know, the purpose of Ramadan is very different to other deeds that we do. It's a pillar of our faith. Our faith has five pillars. But you look at all the others, they are about doing. Whereas Ramadan is about stopping. Abandoning, leaving, very different to all the other four pillars. It's the only one that is about leaving and stopping. And how does Allah describe it? لَعَلَّكُمْ تتقون. So that you can gain this piety, this conscious, this thinking about Allah from moment to the next moment and not being distracted by anything. That's Ramadan. That's what it means. Taqwa is to only do what Allah loves and to stay away from Allah, Allah's hatred, Allah's anger, abandon everything that will anger him. That's Ramadan. That's why Allah said, that's going to gain you taqwa. You know that hunger that you feel during Ramadan, throughout human history, not only for Muslims, throughout human history, it has been a fact. If you want to increase your spiritual closeness to your Lord, whether it's through the Christians, the Jews, whether it's the Buddhists, the Hindus, anyone, they all, they all agree that if you want to have a spiritual uplifting, you need to abandon food and drink and desires and they all have their own ways to do it why is it that we feel closer to Allah in Ramadan than we do in any other time it's because during the whole day you remove from yourself desires and following them isn't that what we were created for and then you're prepared by night to worship Allah as slaves, as if you're worshiping Allah 24 hours in different ways. And you prepared yourself for the night, which is the greatest time in Ramadan, the greatest nights of the year, by removing from yourselves the following, the yearning, the, the taking of desires through that whole day. So you're ready to exert yourself during the night in getting close to Allah. That's what it is. So how could you feel closer to Allah than in those moments? It's not possible. That's Ramadan. So what do we understand? It's really easy to know what deeds to do in Ramadan. There's only one place where Allah mentions everything you need to know pretty much about Ramadan. In Surah Al-Baqarah, you open up the verses. They start with the verse that I mentioned already. It's all about taqwa, getting close to Allah. Stopping the following of desires. Why? Allah made it very clear for us. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى There's only one way into paradise. Only one way. The way is to stop your soul from that which it desires and wants to chase after. That's it. That's what Allah said. Whoever does that says to his soul, no. You're not having it. No matter how much you want it. No matter what the pain is. No matter what the struggle is. You can't have it because Allah said no. If you live like that, 
Jannah is your abode. A covenant between you and Allah, a promise, and Allah never fails in His promise, never breaks His promise. Guaranteed paradise. And that's what Ramadan is. And on top of that, Allah said, in these times, I'm making things that were normally halal for you. Food, drink, and intimate relationship with your wives during the day of Ramadan. Leave this that was normally halal. And then, if you're able to leave the halal, when you come out of Ramadan, it's going to be so much easier to leave the haram. But at the same time, how do you get the maximum out of that fasting? Because that's the first thing Allah mentions. Leaving food and drink is easy. The children can do that. How do you get to a higher level? The higher level is to be conscious of Allah throughout your fast. And the highest level is to never be distracted from Allah during your whole day. That's the highest level. You're conscious. You keep reminding yourself, I'm in the ibadah. Every moment of your fasting is ibadah. You remind yourself. Don't lose that opportunity. Then Allah talks about the next action. Shahr Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. He says to us, the deed you need to be doing is focus on Qur'an. Now, when we talk about the pious people of the past, it's very easy for us to mention people who read the whole Qur'an every day in Ramadan. And even more than that, a Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa, rahimahumullah, they used to finish 60 Qur'ans in Ramadan. But then when you hear about the pious ones, you think, that's history. And we can't do that anymore. Let me tell you. Just about a month ago, there was a coming together in East London Mosque. All about Qur'an. Hufad came to revise Qur'an and go through it. And there are different levels. One of our youth, 15 years old, he read the Qur'an to another Hafiz of Qur'an who was checking him from beginning to end. You know how many hours he took? He read the whole Qur'an from beginning to end in six hours. Six hours. 15-year-old boy from our community. Not living abroad, not even Arab. Not even Arab. Bengali. Six hours he read the Qur'an from beginning to end. Without looking, without a single mistake. This is happening. This Ummah has many people like this. Others finished it in slightly longer times. You know that same, same young lad, before that, he led the whole of the Qur'an in one night. I can't remember if it was in two rakah or if he prayed more than that. Beginning to end in seven hours. One salah of seven hours, they completed the Qur'an. The Ummah is full of khayr, of goodness. And we are about to enter the month of the Qur'an. Whatever amount of Qur'an you read any time other than this in the year, you need to increase. This is what we need to aim for. The norm for every single one of us should be at least in Ramadan we complete it once. And when we look at our scholarship, our tradition from the pious, not even the scholars, just the pious people and even the norm in the Muslim community. Whatever they did outside of the last 10, they increased in the last 10. There should be no excuse. We shouldn't make excuses. Sit down, allocate time to read the Quran and increase in your reading of the Quran, especially at night time. The nights are the greatest nights of the year. The normal reward for one letter of the Quran is 10. Allah's mercy has no limit. If you were to finish one Quran, 
That's over three million hasana, three million good deeds. Just imagine how Allah will multiply that if it's in the nights of Ramadan. The mind can't fathom. Don't deprive yourself. Then Allah picks up on another deed. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Allah says, when my slaves ask about me, I am close. I answer the call of the one who calls upon me. Dua. Don't leave out dua during Ramadan, ever. And the best times for that dua, just before Maghrib, just before you break the fast. And then, at night time, throughout the night, if you get a moment, you don't even have to raise your hands. If you get a moment between your raka'at of taraweeh, make dua. Ask Allah for what you want. Allah loves to be asked and hates that a slave doesn't ask. When you go home from taraweeh, instead of chit-chatting with no purpose, make dua. When you get off a suhoor, make dua. When you're waiting for fajr, make dua. Any time, especially during the night, is a time that is full of mercy, tranquility, and response from Allah. Don't lose it. There's one other deed that we will finish on after a short pause. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'id. The other deed is not mentioned specifically in the Quran, in the verses of fasting. But we know it from the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu And I already mentioned it. The Prophet Sallallahu was the most generous, the pinnacle of generosity in Ramadan. What does that mean? It means one of the greatest deeds you can do in Ramadan is helping other Muslims. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu actually said, Afdalul amal, the best of actions. And tudkhila ala akhik al Muslim. Sururan. That you make another Muslim happy. Help your brothers and sisters in Islam. I'm not only saying with your money, with your time, with your emotions, with the skills that you've been given. Help other Muslims. Let them feel your generosity in Ramadan. Because that is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If we're not going to show each other generosity in Ramadan, when are we going to show it? When you imagine the generosity of Allah, if you want it, then show generosity to the people on the earth. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, Irhamu man fil ard. Have mercy on the, the creation on the earth. Yarhamkum man fil sama. Then Allah in the heavens will have mercy on you. And there's no time like Ramadan for that mercy. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah enable us to make this the best Ramadan we have ever had in our lives. May Allah give us the strength to enjoy the bliss of Ramadan whenever it starts. May Allah make us reach Ramadan in a state of piety and good health. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين اللهم صل وسلم على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم على رسول الله وقوم إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله